Paul Michael Glazer, alias Starsky. And this is David Soul, otherwise known as Hutch, and we're delighted to be with you today. That's right, and we're joining a, a party to celebrate a special visit by the most celebrated legal mind in television history. On wheels. The star of both Perry Mason and Ironsides, Raymond Burr. Also joining us today is Perry's private sec secretary, Della Street. That's the talented actress, Barbara Hale. From Iron Sides, you'll meet the chief co star, Don Galloway. And to liven up the party, there are songs from those razzle dazzle Hudson Brothers. <laughs> and a special mystery guest who will be joining us later in the show. And now, here's Dinah, special guest Raymond Burr and Dinah. And as you and Barbara worked together for nine years on that show and developed an incredible relationship, uh, they have been able to do the same thing. And, and you're an admirer of their work. Yeah, great. I think show. it's the best new show on the air, without question. Yeah, I'm, I'm so delighted because uh, they are unconventional, as you always have been in your portrayals of policemen. They play undercover policemen, Star, Skin, Hutch, and they agreed to blow their cover today, which I <laughs> thought was really nice. Please welcome once again Starsky, Paul, Michael, Glazer, and Hutch. David See when they sit here, and they both come on and get to kiss them both. <laughs> we worked together before, but this is the first time I've had a chance to meet David. We were worked on uh, music, the music uh, show last People's night. Music Awards show. But do you have any kind of craziness like they described went on on well, there? I was talking <laughs> about that back there when, when you were talking about that. And I think uh, after a nine-year relationship, you know, uh, you, you have it. I would imagine, though I don't know, I would imagine that. Uh, you can begin to relax a little more with each other. I think what we've, you know, on the first season, we've, uh, we've been, uh, we've taken our work probably sometimes too seriously. Well, you have to. Yeah. I mean, because you're just getting into the form of it. But they could go, you could go a little flaky after nine oh, yeah. years, getting two years. Well, I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we do, we, we, we do jokes on each other. I set Paul on fire a couple of weeks ago. Oh, well, that's but, cute. Uh, but, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're moments. kind of a joke, yeah. Was it over quickly? You got... <laughs> you did get the right people it was over right very now? quickly. Yeah. Very, qu very quickly. You put a tail of toilet paper down my back and lit it on fire. Oh, that's nice. And I was sitting on the camera, Dolly, and I was looking through the camera, and I was saying, boy, it's getting hot in here. <laughs> I was telling... Barbara was talking about how they had an intuitive thing that was working, and, and you two have the same thing going even in this short a time you you have an extrasensory uh, perception about I, I, I know that term is used so lightly but it, it's true in this particular case mm -hmm. T give them an example because they were go ahead I just thought of a great example you'll kill me for it afterwards okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> might will be on this show go ahead. Uh, great example of, uh, of, of uh, extrasensory when uh, we get ready to do a shot and the cameras all set up and everything and they ring the they have a they have a horn on the dolly Tell them how it sounds. Oh, I can't do it. You do it. Oh, I can't. <laughs> you know, at, at 9 o'clock at night when you're trying to relax and they, they hit that horn. And I, I, I get up from my chair and I start walking and I know immediately where David is. You do? He's on the telephone. <laughs> oh, that's it's a good funny. One. We kid each other all yeah. the time because... Uh, I was just saying backstage, I said, what's kind of, what do we have? He asked me, said, what kind of gags do we play on each other? And I said, well, you know, we, there's one running gag that you play on me, one running gag I play on you. The running gag he plays on me is, uh, am I camera right or camera? Where we go, uh, which is, <laughs> he, he, David gets very into the geography of it all. And my, my running thing is, in the middle of a take, I'll stop and I'll say, can I shoot another, please? <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, but you don't have to. You're, they're running so much on that show. I, I mean, I don't know how you get all the action, but you don't have time for jokes. You really don't. You must have a thousand setups a day with it. No, I, I think we'll probably have... Uh... Yeah. I think one point that, uh, that, that Raymond, or Mr. Burr, it's to me, <laughs> Uh, we'll get Ray Ray will Ray. But I think He'll one of the things that he brought Ray. up earlier was that uh, I think a, a lot of the responsibility of, of, of a happy set lies with the, with the two principal people. Yeah. And that um, a great deal of our efforts in terms of, you know, uh, keeping the spirit high and keeping mm -hmm. people working uh, is given to the crew. Yeah. Uh, we have a marvelous crew and, um, mm -hmm. and they respond uh, 
to your positive way. Yeah. Feelings about how yourself. we feel is yeah. how they yeah. feel. There's no, no, there's no envy, and you're not counting the number yeah. of lines and all that sort of thing. Yeah, it's very important to keep them because uh, they help us. It's a, it's a reciprocal sure. thing, you know. Sure is. And, uh, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, um, you know, because it's so unconventional, the Starsky and Hutch approach to police work. Uh, have, did you get much flack from policemen? Because I know Ray did at first uh, from, from the police department. They didn't feel that was an accurate portrayal. Do you? In, in what respect? Well, they wanted, to, we used to get letters to the police really weren't kind of like Ironside. They, they, uh, and that was, of course, during a period of time when also they were trying to get more college men into police work and did get more college men. And uh, over the period of the eight years, why uh, the attitude of the, some of the police They felt changed, you were yeah. almost too compassionate at the times yes. and a little too, was it too oriented toward understanding the prisoners rather than... Mm. And you should wear a gun at all times and everything. And I thought, I, I kept saying, look, the man's in a wheelchair. He's not going to be able, unless you've got guns coming out of the wheels of the chair. Yeah. Uh, David Bond chair. Yeah, David Bond chair. That's right. A Raymond Bond chair, that's what I meant. Raymond. We, uh, I think we, uh, we have a different situation in that there's an incredible, uh, not incredible, but there's a great degree of theatricality in Starsky mm -hmm. and Hutch. Uh, uh, we we look for uh, degrees of authenticity. We look we look to relate to the other characters on a very real and very human uh, level uh, uh, response. But also uh, in the uh, uh, the bizarre characters that come through our, our stories and the uh, the ways in which we handle our heavies, um, we approach a almost superhero uh, or it is a superhero type of uh, situation and I find that, that the police react very favorably, uh, favorably almost in the same respect that the public does it's, it's a kind of escape mm -hmm. you know they like, to, they like to see us do things that they would love to be able to do but if they ever got caught doing it they lose their badge probably. <laughs> I spoke with a policeman the other day was on a, a great length and um, he was saying to me that his initial reaction, he's a, he is an undercover cop who happened to work as a, they have highway, they have uh, motor cops on locations to take care of crowds and traffic and so forth. But he, and he was saying his first reaction to Starsky and Hutch was uh, rather negative based on the, on the, on the fact that uh, we always get our man. And the antics that we go through, I think, uh, we're interested sometimes, as Paul said, in the theatrical as opposed to the realistic, because I think it's, it's entertaining. It's like medical shows. It's you have to, it has to be contained within yeah. mm -hmm. an hour, and you have to have a solution. You can't, go, you know, it can't be yeah. continued next week. But he, he said that his opinion had, in, in the last several months, has changed about the show, because particularly in regards to one case, which happened to be a, a case of uh, murder-rape. And... Um, uh, he said the man turned himself in the following day because he had he had, he was also a guy who you might call a idiot watched a lot of television and was convinced that they were getting him anyway they wouldn't really? they would get him so he turned himself in and it happened that he was wanted for burglary uh, or some other charge uh, earlier and so he said that I th he, he said that his that his opinion of the show had changed in that respect that uh, suddenly he could perform a service yeah. There is Did some you bring a letter? Was there a letter that you brought oh, from the yeah, prison? Yeah. Do you have I, it with you? I got a card delivered to me on the set the other day, on Friday, from a police officer here in L.A. <laughs> uh, whose name at the moment I won't say because I might want to use it sometime. Is it a bad card? <laughs> well, Very sort small. Of, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a regular TV. card that L.A. police hand out. Huh? Uh, on the back it says, Mr. Soul, after seeing your TV show, I... I'm sorry that I booked you in 1968 for a traffic warrant. <laughs> Which one are you, Starsky or Hutch? 